are going to get down and dirty and talk about bacteria. Do I have your attention? We are going to be talking about microbiotics, of course. Moving forward to our next topic, microbiotics inside the human body. Peel-sized robots are ushering in a revolution in microbiotics. They have the potential to change how healthcare providers diagnose and identify illnesses within the gastrointestinal tract, while also causing minimal discomfort to patients. To know what this is all about, let's hear more about this from the co-founder and CEO of Indiatix, Mr. Tori Smith. Come on up. Hi there. Hey, thanks Welcome. so much. Hi, folks. So uh, what I've got in my hand is a little tiny robot. And uh, if it's microbiotics or micro-robotics, we're really all here for the same reason. Um, so before I begin, I'll just hold up a, a passive pill camera. These have been around for about 20 years. And we feel that the time has come to take this platform uh, to the next level, right? So, so what do you do when you suddenly can cause a robot to move around? Let's go have a look. And uh, when you name a company in the medical field, you have to uh, put a funny name in there. So endiotics means to go within, to understand, and to fix the problems in the human body using tiny robots. So let's, uh, let's head to the next slide here. There we go. OK. So uh, yeah, we've got 20 years of swallowing passive pill cameras. And many people felt that this would be the end of things like the colonoscopy, right? Like, who wants to go through one of those? And unfortunately, due to the passive nature, they really are just like a 1 to 3% niche use case, right? So let's, let's actually let's, let's, uh, take this to the next level here. So what we're going to do is, if I want to make tiny robot brain surgeons, uh, that's, that's what I call future talk. What can we do right now to establish microrobotics inside the human body as an actual real market category? I think we start in the stomach. So just imagine you've got a belly ache, and we need to figure out what's going on. Unfortunately, the standard of care is about three or even four visits to the hospital. And we actually have people in our own, within the company, experiencing that standard of care right now. now Endoscopes in the stomach is worth about $16 billion. Um, but uh, like we said, it's very antiquated. It's arduous. We have to knock you out, jam a tube into your body. So as a result, if your belly aches, uh, that's just not a lot of fun. OK, so we would like to add propulsion to this platform. So PillBot is really just a swimming pill camera. We use four little pump jets to basically swim in a fluid volume the way a quadcopter drone might swim through the air or fly. And uh, we do this uh, basically by just taking some cheap motors and putting propellers on them and putting some vents around it. So this is actually pretty simple. Uh, the, the device I'm holding in my hand, probably worth about 35 bucks worth of parts we got off the you know, Amazon and other places. Um, we think we can probably do this for significantly less than $25. So th this really is just a cheap moving eyeball in the stomach to build. The other part of this that's fun is the patient-facing side, right? So if you're a patient and you're going in for an endoscopy, right, you might have to drink some horrible liquid. You might have to get knocked out. You know, you have to recover from that sedation. And the clinic has to deal with you for that whole process. So I'm going to be a patient for you today uh, with a new standard of care. So what I did was I went out last night with my friends and teammates and had a great dinner. And uh, I stopped at that point. So when I woke up this morning, I skipped my coffee, which is very difficult for me. Um, and I haven't had breakfast. And throughout the day, I've been drinking a glass or two of water here and there. So that's prep. Like we said, the core technology for endiotics for our first product is just a quad pump jet swimming robot. We filed five patents so far. I've got news from the lawyers that we were getting our first issue, issued patent uh, later this month on the 29th. So we're very excited about that. We've also trademarked the name PillBot, because I just think that's so cool, right? So the key is, you know, when you, when you dream about something big, it, you know, it's one thing if you're an engineer and you've got your, your sci-fi sci dreams, you know, running through your head all the time. The real question is, how is this going to be received out in the world? Right? So we decided to get really aggressive and reach out to gastroenterologists, not only at the top of the world, but also the rank-and-file GIs who are cranking patients through their clinics day in, day out. 
So far, nearly every single GI that we've spoken to has said three things. One, this is the future. This is awesome. I would love to be involved with this you know, way to go. Two, if you give me a moving eyeball in the stomach, that's simple. It's cheap, easy, and, and simple for the patient. I would use this tool every day. You know, I could use it on half or maybe even three quarters of my cases as just a mass screening tool. And finally, each one of them has asked to be a part of the clinical trial. So we're very excited to be up here right now um, with basically what we think is proven technical feasibility. And we're going to show you a little bit more about that later. This is Dr. Vivek Kumbari. He just came out of Johns Hopkins to take over the chief position of GI at Mayo. And together with Dr. Hay out of King's College London, we now have the top three GI institutions in the world on our board. So we're very excited to take this to the masses appropriately. All right, a little bit about this uh, team. <laughs> why, would, uh, why would you go ahead and build a giant Tesla coil and put that on a, a screen right now? The reason is this is a team that goes for moonshots. We, we don't like it easy. We don't like it uh, fast. You know, we are, we are willing to do the hard things and basically take something really scary to market because honestly, 20 years of passive pill cameras and nothing following is maybe a little too long for the world's pop, uh, patient population. So a little thing about our, our company, we, we started with a napkin sketch. Uh, we went through Founder Institute and started learning how to uh, you know, stop being engineers full time and be, be founders. I'm very, very excited to have gone through several highly oversubscribed rounds of funding along the way, and just trying to be as honest as we can be about what our actual tech is at any moment in time. So uh, yeah, you know, we're trying to earn the public trust by showing the reality of this adventure. So you can see here um, you know, a potato-sized robot that proved quad pump jet propulsion could actually be really cool, right? You see a fist-sized robot that didn't raise us any money at all, but it was our first foray into custom electronics, which was a big step for us. Then when we got down to thumb size, people really started taking, uh, taking notes. And during the height of COVID, uh, we brought in uh, more than a million dollars on, on our angel round. So we're, we're very excited to be getting this kind of interest from uh, the, the entrepreneurial scene, any, any, anywhere from patients to, to venture capitalists. Um, to other founders and, 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 and those first angel checks. And uh, it was June 17th of 2020 when we did our first in human test uh, in my living room in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, despite having just 48 pixels square of grayscale, we were able to see tissue sloughing off inside my stomach. And it was like, whoa, we, we've got something special here. So uh, let's see how far we can go from that. We've made a few improvements to the video, but uh, <laughs> bear with me. What you're seeing here is literally the best pictures we've ever shot. You know, that's 160 pixels square. That's, that's pretty horrible, right? Those little white dots are air bubbles. But the neat thing is, this is real. We, we are actually moving robots around inside our own stomachs in real time with a live video feed. And we, we are very excited to say that by the, you know, in the next couple of months, I, I would say we're probably going to be competitive with uh, just about any endoscope on the market. Okay, so from a, from a commercial competitive landscape you know, standpoint, what are, what are we really trying to do here? It, it's very simple. We want to give a doctor a tool as powerful as an endoscope, at least in the, in the, in the field of like visual inspection. Just as powerful, one-to-one, -one, but in a patient experience of swallowing that pill camera, right? You know, just drink some water and swallow the damn thing and let's have a look around inside you. And uh, that's, that's very exciting to us, and let's, let's give some credit to, I think, what our cl closest direct competitors would be, the Navicam project coming out of China. Uh, they basically lie a patient in a magnetic machine, and they're able to induce motion in a pill camera. Um, love that crew, it really kind of validates our vision and our value proposition. We're kind of excited to uh, do this with no capital equipment, so we can show you a little bit about that, right? Do you, want, do you want to put this in a room, get your patients in there? Honestly, this is amazing, right? What we're trying to do with endiotics, though, is just like we're cutting the cord on the catheter, right? Let's give you the tip of the catheter, but minus the catheter. 
let's also potentially cut the cord on the hospital itself or the clinic, right? You know, if it's three or four visits to a hospital, um, what happens when it's your zeroth visit to the hospital? What if you just call up your doctor and say, look, my belly's been aching for a few days, and this thing comes on your doorstep the next morning? And this is where we're, we're really standing on the shoulders of giants, because Jeff Martha over at Medtronic has partnered with Amazon to do at-home capsule endoscopy, right? So we're incredibly grateful for that hard work, because we'd like to take advantage of it. We'd like to join. OK, so to sort of sum up what we're trying to create here with you know, our first product is basically a moving eyeball in the stomach that is an active procedure. That's what gives you access to the lion's share of patients and keeps you out of that uncanny valley of falling into niche use, right? It's great for a patient because it's sedation free if you can handle swallowing a giant pill like this. And you know we're working on it, but believe it or not, we think we can take this to market. And by virtue of having no capital equipment, I mean, honestly, our system would be like an electronic device with a USB dongle that talks to this at low frequency radio. The last piece of hardware you need, honestly, is just like an Xbox controller. This is how you enable telemedicine at home, right? So imagine you just hop on a Zoom call with your doctor, and they say, you know, swallow the thing, and you get to see in real time on this Zoom call your doctor pilot the thing around your stomach and tell you what's wrong or what's right. And then you can take that imagery with you if you want. The bottom line is just to try to give a patient a little bit of dignity, a sense of being in control, and then not going through all the gatekeeping that, unfortunately, so many patients are used to. Uh, in the developing world, I was surprised to learn that patients even get flown or, or on trains like hundreds of miles to get to an endoscopy clinic. And I'm thinking, like, that's a lot of work just to have a look around inside. So this is pretty fun. Now, let's, let's uh, kind of give some credit to other work being done out in the world right now. So we are not at all the first entity to dream of tiny robots in the human body. I mean, if you think about Fantastic Voyage or Inner Space, you know, you know we've been trying to do this for a long time. Um, EMPA Robotics is doing amazing jellyfish-like motion using external magnetic actuation. So very cool stuff there. Alice Cruz here. Look at Bionaut Labs. So these, these folks also use external magnetic fields. Uh, Peter Diamandis of the XPRIZE Foundation, who's also connected to exponential medicine, um, invested in this company. They're going to put these tiny little helical corkscrews in you that can go all the way up your spine into your brain. Um, but you'll notice the common theme of external magnetic actuation, right? I'm kind of excited to just develop the platform itself, right? I want the actual thing you swallow to be the tech, and I want to use this as a foundation to do all kinds of other medicine and really reduce that gatekeeping. Like, let, let the patient population and mass experience this, not just the few who can get into the hospital that day. OK, so any commercial venture has to have some kind of a way we want to go out and make some money, right? So we're going to start in you know, the, the smart pills market, mainly just because it provides us 20 years of, of regulatory footing to stand on for a predicate pathway. And it also gives us a $500 reimbursement code uh, here in the US market. So I mean, hey, if I can build this for, five, uh, for 25 bucks and sell it for 500, while potentially lowering a patient's cost by an order of magnitude by eliminating all those hospital visits and drugs and all that stuff, then, hey, this is actually a pretty exciting opportunity. So, we are aimed squarely at the stomach. Let's go put some pressure on the world of endoscopes. Let's, uh, let's turn that $16 billion market upside down. The GI tract market uh, for end endoscopy devices alone is $67 billion. If we want to go beyond that, we can certainly go into the colon, although having swallowed 13 of these and put three somewhere else, I can tell you the stomach is a lot more fun to start in, right? So we're going to start where it's fun for everyone. But really what we're doing here is something larger, which we've touched on, which is creating this category of micro-robotics inside the human body, right? Who knows where this is going to go? And we are not going to be the ones to take it all the way. You know, we're going to start it. We're going to compete. We're going to try to treat patients, get a couple generations of products done. But nothing's going to make us happier than to see other people doing this too, right? Let's collaborate. Let's, let's help people. I think we covered our business model just fine. You know, build it for 25 bucks, sell it for 500, save a patient a ton of money. You're going to do some good stuff out there. Obviously, we're, we're, I'll, I'll give you the whole alphabet soup of AI and ML. 
when it comes to what we're gonna do with the data we see, right? But you've seen that before, so let's focus on what stands out here. Now you find, <laughs> you find us at an interesting moment in time because we put 22 of these robots through our own bodies. And I'd say we've come about as far as we can in my living room. It's time to bring in new partners and really get this thing out to market, right? So uh, for us, the next step is uh, institutional review board trials. Just a couple of patients here and there doing IRBs. I need about six months, I think, to deliver on the promise of a moving eyeball in the stomach. What you're about to see is a sinking, clouded eyeball in the stomach. <laughs> Which, uh, which is okay, actually, but we, we tend to make progress pretty quickly, so we're very, we're very honored to be able to show you what we actually have at this instant in time. And from there, my goal is to begin our FDA trial, uh, very much hopefully predicated on the world of passive pill cameras. Maybe about 100 patients um, hoping, hoping to start selling the device in the open market uh, by the end of next year. Now, we spoke a little bit about the now, right? Big, dumb horse pill in the stomach, huge opportunity, right? Very excited. What comes next, okay? What comes next is an entirely new world. What comes next is the Swiss army knife unfolding on this thing. You wanna do drug delivery? You wanna take tissue samples? Do you want to snip polyps, right? Do you wanna sample the microbiome? Do you wanna deliver microbiome transplants? I mean, that's all in the GI tract. I could keep going. Do you wanna take drips from the bile duct and look for biomarkers from pancreatic cancer? Or maybe send the camera up the bile duct on a little flexible stock, maybe with a phased ultrasound array so that not only are you looking for lesions, but you're also looking for lumps deeper in the tissue, right? What if we could piggyback a free pancreatic cancer screening on every patient that's got a bellyache? That'd be kind of cool. What if we could give our oncologist 10 to 15 years of a head start? So, and then finally, uh, what if we made this thing the size of a rice grain? What if we did brain surgery with it, right? These are the things we're excited about, and we'd very much like to say that we're doing nanotechnology, but no, you know, we, we're making robotics that if we're lucky will be micro-robotics, right? Nano-robotics come next. But if we can show the world that this is possible, that it's the right thing to do, and that it's a great opportunity for everyone involved, well then maybe we're laying the groundwork for people that come in and say, hey, we can do molecular sized machines, right? Where the worlds of the mechanical worlds and the biological worlds essentially become one is at the nanoscale. Now, I just listened to some amazing talks, right? We really are standing on the shoulders of giants. Like, this was 3D printed from biocompatible resins, um, which I think we heard about earlier, right? You know, we, we are benefiting so much from the work done by others such as Pietro Valdastri, Metin City. Um, these guys are doing tiny, magnetically actuated robots doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I know that uh, Pietro is going after pancreatic cancer in a very interesting way, right? And uh, I'm just happy to be able to say that every person that we reach out to enthusiastically wants to lend a hand and be a part of it uh, because we can't let another decade or two go by before we push that standard of care forward, right? You know, we, we should feel the pressure from the, the world's patients to actually do a little bit better. So with all that being said, I think it's about enough hot air, and uh, maybe instead of being a presenter, I might become your patient. So uh, how are we doing, Alex? Should we get him mic'd up? <laughs> James. Just hold it over there. That's our backup. Awesome. All right. Hello, everyone. Well, as part of sort of being part of I'll call it R&D, where uh, you're going to join us in sort of a little bit of R&D work here. Um, we have our latest version. Like, we're almost weekly having a new version of software, a new version of hardware. This is just sort of how, how we develop things. Um, and so we, ha we have our, our latest version here. We're just pulling it up online. I can let you get friendly with this. No problem. And with this. And I'm going to move my laptop over here. And then hopefully we can uh, show you live on the screen well, look the, at that. Um, the live video feed. So we've got light, which is important. Right now we're using this big old antenna. Usually we just duct tape it to my belly. Our goal is to create a product that can communicate through a few you know, feet of water, of human tissue, and then across a typical room. Low frequency radio is really useful in that it can punch through tissue 
And depending on how you do your code and your onboard compression, which we haven't even yet implemented, I think we're going to be able to get like HD video. I think we're going to be able to put two cameras on it and get stereoscopic vision. I think you know you could put on an Oculus headset and all of a sudden you're inside a patient who's the size of the room and you just swim around and figure out what you want to do. All right, so. Oh yeah, good. We got. Thank you. By I the way, doing pretty good. Let's all here for our AV folks who, at the last <laughs> second, you know, make make miracles like this yeah. happen. Um, so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to to get some video again, brand new software here. So give me, good, a, give me a second here. We're at the phase in R and D where once in a while you see a flash of exactly what you were hoping for, and R and D is all about basically pushing through those months, you know, until you get to that point. And that's when it ends. When everything looks good, you send it off to manufacturing. <laughs> Not quite, but we're, uh, we're working our way there very nicely. Yeah, what you see, the funny little gobbledygook here is what you call a dropped packet, right? When the, when the radio is able to push a packet through, but not necessarily the whole image. But uh, that's fine. We should have this in a minute. In the meantime, while we're setting this up, do we have any questions from the audience? I uh, would love to, love to engage. Yeah, what's up? Oh, the question is, how is this different from capsule endoscopy, which is really the question of the day, right? Thank you very much for that. So let, let's, let's put the two side by side and compare them, right? So what I have in my left hand is PillCam, currently owned by Medtronic, came out of Israel in the 90s, given imaging was the company. And in my right hand, PillBot. The difference between these two is that we squirt water out the back in a fancy way to be able to swim around in a fluid volume what that allows us to do is instead of having access to a $800 million market annually for capsule endoscopy, we're actually going after the $67 billion active endoscopy device space. And we're sort of carving that down. Um, look at that. We're carving that down into the $16 billion stomach market. So really making pill cameras move is how we think we're going to be able to really have a big impact on the patient population. But uh, would you hold that radio for one oh, second? Absolutely. They say put your robot where your mouth is. All right. Bottoms so, up. <laughs> OK. Hey, oh. let, let me have a record here. Right. Awesome. We like recording this stuff. So. Oh, this is so much fun. We're very grateful for everyone being willing to watch this R&D in action. But, but it's deliberate. OK, so yep, here we go. All right, here we go. Uh, part of the, there's a, there's a whole series of things that doctors are really interested in. Um, the first part of it is actually going down the esophagus. So uh, what we would do is we'd put the robot in high data rate mode so we get high, high quality, high da data rate uh, going down through the esophagus. And then the, the robot will settle basically on the stomach. And it'll take a few seconds for that data then to get transmitted out uh, for the doctor to look at. Um, after that, um, the robot was basically going to be resting, uh, you know, in the stomach, and then the doctor will will pick up an Xbox hey. controller, and will basically say, "Okay, I need to go look around." Um, there are certain areas that the doctors are particularly interested in. Depending on what you know what the the patient is complaining about, they say, "Oh, I might want to go look over here. I might want to look for an ulcer or, or signs of, of different things." Did you make that robot bigger than the last time? Because when you said esophagus, I just said, "Wow, that feels like it's in my neck." <laughs> we're uh, we're always uh, we're always we're always having fun with kind of each version that we build as we learn uh, <clears throat> new performance parameters and stuff. So again, thank you for being part of literally brand new R and D uh, it just just off the uh, just off the the presses right now. What I'm doing right now is I'm waving the antenna around, looking to see if I can uh, catch a frame. The robot should have made it through my esophagus into my stomach now. And uh, yeah, we may actually pick it up. I'm going to reset the radio just because there's a lot of stuff going on up here that keeps One of the reasons why radio. we're fundraising right now is that there's actually a fair amount of code involved. Um, wow. OK, we have a live signal. All right. So we're, we're basically, he's. There you go. Tori's still learning about anatomy, so he's going to try to position the, uh, the antenna closer to where the robot now is inside his stomach and try to get uh, our signal uh, up a little bit higher. I would say up here. Yeah. There you go. Look at that. 
This is why teamwork makes the dream work. All right, do you want to grab that Xbox controller? Let's make this thing move around. Well, let's try to get some live video first. So try to give me that number, the RSSI, okay. down to like 60 or 50. Then, uh, then I'll start driving it around. Um, but the sequence is... Well, know, look at that. Okay, I'm going to lean over here. <laughs> By the way, this is how much fun that we get to have. We're like, all this right. This is a typical day at the office, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. We've got this new radio that's putting a lot more data through, but up, it's, up higher, up higher. it's touchy like a Ferrari. There you go. Okay. Basic anatomy. So, I mean, engineers have to learn anatomy through this process. There we go. Okay. So wow. now, now we're looking at live video inside Tori's stomach. Um, and you can kind of see the regular there. This is sort of the, uh, the folds uh, inside the stomach. Isn't yeah, that right? Just, isn't that pretty? Isn't that, nice? isn't that the best video you've ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now comes the fun part, right? You, someone mentioned about the passive pill cameras, right? If you can drop a, a, a camera into the stomach and get this. But the fun part is when you actually start to drive around. Um, so he needs to have a good signal. There we go. So we got a, a good signal. This is going to be my power stance for the next All two right, minutes. All right, so see if you can find, find that. Oh, I, there we go. <laughs> All right, 60, 59, that's almost up there. Um, but once we have, once we have that, uh, that signal, then I can go ahead and start driving it around. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I got you 50 decibels there for a second. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and start moving it. I don't think you have a point, so I'm going to pull it back over to um, see if I can help you get that better. Because it might be on the back side of his stomach, so I'm just going to move it around a little bit and try to pull it. There we go, we're in the 50s, that's perfect. Okay, I'll um, just hold right here. All right, let me, yeah, let me see if I can find you. I'm going to search out. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Oh. Where's the screen? <laughs> Do we lose the screen? Okay, I think we're back. We're back. There we go. A typical day in the office, to be honest. All right, we're not getting enough of a clean signal here. I see at the bottom we get a little bit of visual. Yeah, I need to be down in the 50s here. Let's see, see here. Is there any doctors? Is there any doctors in the, in the room? <laughs> you want to come up here and help? You want to get doctors involved, right? <laughs> well, look at that. All right, so we found, we, we found it. Wow. Thank you. Bravo. Um, but this is, this is why, you know, seriously, you know, we're a bunch of engineers, and we're, and we're taking tech, and we really need, you know, professional help from the industry to find out how to, to carve, you know, how to do our tech to get it to work and be effective. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Also, if you want, you're more than welcome <laughs> to uh, grab this radio. This is where collaboration Come really on. comes Come in, on. right? Come because on. You, you, you came to Vegas for a show, and here we go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Wendy. Wendy, Wendy I'm Tori. Very nice, very nice. Alex. Hi. Nice to meet you. you. Please. So this right. is the radio, and feel free. My, my, okay. my distended stomach is your palate. Okay, so yours. Ah, oh, wow. Okay, Wendy, hold, hold it there for a sec. You're amazing. So now I'm going to do a little bit of driving around, and let's just see kind of what we see. So what I'm doing is, is you can kind of see the image change just slightly as I'm, as I'm sort of engaging the Xbox controller. Tori mentioned, oh, there's maybe the Polaris or something like that. Oh, check that um, out. Check that out, indeed. Um, it always fascinates us, by the way. So, uh, you know, as, so the doctor basically would, you know, know where, what he's looking for, she's looking for, and try to go and do, do sort of, you know, a mapping, basically, of the stomach and look around inside actively, uh, move forward and back, up and down, left and right, pitch, we have, you know, full six degrees of freedom of motion um, and do some analysis in there. Sorry, I'm, Wendy, I might have moved it out of the way. I was, uh, I was no, driving, right. I was driving I'm, too I'm much. I'm holding, it's okay, you're, you're presenting. Okay. The number at the top, the RSSI we want number, that to be yes. as that gets lower, right. it's better. Okay. And so if you are trying a few locations, um, you can sort of try to minimize that number. So what endoscopy would do is small movements too, right? So this is like the location you'd want to be. Nice. But you can still angle it within this area. And maybe, I don't know, I mean, I, I I'm new here. <laughs> I, I think that. I think we may Our oh intern, goodness, that. everybody. I think we may have a position All right, we, we, got, we got it back live again. <laughs> All right, so what I'll do is I'll do a quick, I'll do a, a yaw movement, okay? So we're going to rotate to the right. Um, 
and see if I can look around. Um, sometimes we have Tori Swallow, like let's say a second pill bot, and we play games like go search and search and destroy, go try to find the other pill bot. And so we in can technical have, terms, we call that game colon racing 5000. That's right. So we, uh, yeah. we, have, we have a little bit of fun. Oh, in look at all that. Oh my gosh, stuff. that's beautiful. So we're working on lensing, we're working on image quality and just radio reliability. We're working on neutral buoyancy. Right now we're sort of sitting at the bottom, right? But honestly, lenses and radio optimization and neutral buoyancy, like, these are pretty reasonable problems to solve, right? It's not helping that he's talking because everything yeah. is It moves around. So your patient has to be less talking. <laughs> I, 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 will say, I will say, I know that uh, we're trying to keep the conference on schedule. So um, we'll probably end here pretty soon, but there's a, this is the networking break. Come on up. We'll show you the robots. You can pass them around. I'll give you the Xbox controller. Uh, you can give your shot at trying to get the better radio reception. Um, it's an interactive uh, display. And we, by the way, we do love feedback also. Thank you, Wendy, so much. This is really helpful. This helps you, uh, us, uh, our engineering, start? to deliver this to, to the world. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, everyone. Uh, this, this is actually a typical day in the office, right? What you just saw is not buggy for us. This is actually probably the best we've ever done, even including in our living room, right? So we, we would really like to thank everyone for being able to witness this, because hopefully next year, you know, we're doing some really crazy stuff. But uh, we need help and collaboration now. So thanks, everyone. Thank you.